Greetings, Marsh here, and welcome to episode 45 of my Modded Factorio playthrough. Now that we've got algae processing done and sulfur processing done and all of that stuff, we can work on the next items to build on the bus here. Luckily, we already have engines researched, which would allow us to have construction robots, railways, cars, lots of good stuff locked behind this, and we can already build it. So it's definitely something we want to do. Part of the greater goal here is that I want to expand the base and put a wall up here and kill all those biters and then we'll have a nice safe zone to uh, mine lots of these resources. And to do that we're going to need trains, or at least trains will make it a little easier to move things around. Let's see if there's anything else we can research uh, to make the wall a little easier or a little stronger. We can get gun turrets Mark II. That's probably worth getting. It's worth putting these on the bus because we're going to need a bunch of them for a big wall. So we're kind of at the point where we're going to want to start building some of these uh, final products on the bus just to save us some handcrafting time. So gun turrets for sure. And might as well make the cannons too. We can put those on the on the wall to make the wall a little stronger. And why not make some concrete walls as well? Let's see. Oh, gates would be nice. It's like, <laughs> it's a shopping spree, finding all the things we're going to need for our wall. Uh, gates, yep, we can make gates. We don't need engines, just uh, single cylinder engines, not the full engines for those. And that should be enough for now. Let that research. Looks like it's probably going to go pretty quick. But there's some things on the factory that we could upgrade slash fix. Like on uh, stone processing here, one thing I noticed is that some of these steel furnaces are picking up fuel and trying to make charcoal and dump it off on this brick belt here. So the way to fix this is we need to force a particular recipe for these, and we do that with the blue furnaces, these steel ones here. we can force them to make the recipes that we want and they won't get confused. Whoops. <laughs> that turned into a quick mess. Okay, that looks cleaned up. There's kind of another little problem that we're having. that the stone, the crushed stone, isn't making it all the way to these assembly machines in the back. And part of the reason is because the way we have the circuit network set up, we are prioritizing crushed stone. So eventually we run out of it and we need to replace it with the slag. And since these machines aren't running all the time, they can't keep up. They only work in order to fill this up to 2000. So if we're going to want real-time access to crushing slag, we're going to need a lot more machines than that. Let's make... Let's make like 12 of them. See if there's any in the truck. Yep. Okay, you might just have to... pick up a lot of this stuff to move it around. Looks like when we pick this up, we're going to break the circuit network. I will just artificially limit this. So something like this ought to work. Fast belt going in. Then we need uh, two fast belts going out. Something like that, and we can hook it up to the circuit network. Make the condition the same on both sides. And hook it up. Okay, let's reconnect circuit network for the phosphorus. There it goes. We can open this up again. And it might take a while to see how this works, but it seems like it's going okay. And we also need to hook these belts back up. And there it goes, it's fired up again. And this time it has no trouble keeping up. 
unfortunately our sulfur has backed up as well. And I think the reason for that is down here we had all of this, I believe, calcium sulfate that was building up when we were making fertilizer and we weren't processing it back into sulfur yet. And now that we can, it's just completely clogged the system. So I think we have a very large amount of sulfur that we've collected. And unfortunately, at the moment, we really don't have a lot we could uh, make out of it. The only real dump we have is mining. So we don't really need the fertilizer anymore. And the fertilizer, it might not have actually been dumping it, but uh, transforming it into a different form. Uh, I will leave this sulfur dioxide gas full for now. It could be clogging lead, but I guess we'll wait and see if lead does back up and then we'll have to come back and deal with this. We don't want to be washing coal uh, needlessly and clog up the system with sulfur. Uh, one thing we can try are these uh, two by two containers from AI industry. They're basically just another type of chest that uses steel. And then looks like you can unlock a bigger one, which uses concrete and steel. And even bigger still. It's kind of a better progression of building sizes as compared to how the angel silos work. But I'll research all three. While that's going, it could be a good opportunity to lay down some more concrete. Because that's the best way to get rid of all of our stone for now, anyway. Okay, bricks have been placed. While I was placing them, I was thinking one other thing we could use stone on is making landfill. It is certainly a way to get rid of stone. And as you can see by uh, the amount of concrete I've been laying, I've definitely been trying to get rid of it. But we do use landfill occasionally, so it would be nice to create it automatically. A single machine should do. Maybe like right here. 20 stone every 0.5 seconds, which sounds like all of it. Let's just use three stack inserters and see what happens. Yep, pretty much all of it, although it looks like it's a little slowed down because of the belt speed. So we might want to make that a red belt. Okay, let's put a chest there. Let's just make one stack for now. Go. That's definitely testing the system. And it's running at full power. So here's an example of some of those AI Industries boxes. So it's up to you if they look better or worse than the Angels ones. I kind of think they look better. So I'll use this 4x4 right here. So let's just drop it there. Have a loader going out and a loader going in. And let's set a circuit condition so this doesn't run forever. Let's say 2000. So sulfur has to be less than 2000 for this to run. And then eventually when sulfur clogs up, it'll clog up back here, it'll clog up these machines, and then the carbon will stop running. Although it might be a more elegant solution to stop the input right here rather than the output. So if we do this, and we'll copy the condition and put it over here, and get rid of that one. There we go. So now the entire setup of making carbon from washing coal will be turned on and off right here at the source if we end up collecting too much sulfur. We can take this a step further by kind of fixing this too because right now it's basically filling it up to 80% and it's the same problem we were having before with carbon dioxide where there's no buffer in the tank for doing it this way. 
So we really only want this to run when the tank gets really low. So let's say when it gets down to, uh, let's say 20%. And 20% of that tank is 4,000. So sulfur so ducts, I guess, is less than 4,000. This will run to fill it up. And conversely, on the other side of the system, we need to set this to only run when the system has any room in it as well. Let's see, it's actually hooked up to this tank here, which is kind of an interesting way of doing it, but let's do this here. And let's tell it to turn on only when this has any room in it. So let's do the same condition where it's sulfur dioxide gas, it's less than 4,000. The calcium sulfate will only run if there is room in the sulfur dioxide tank for the sulfur dioxide gas from making lead. And unfortunately that is full right now and lead is falling behind, which is kind of a problem, but it's still going for now. Because basically we always want lead to have priority because we need to be able to produce that gas to keep the system moving. And the gas from that tank will always be pushed to this one here. If sulfuric acid is consumed, it will be consumed itself. Which is kind of the problem is we're just not consuming sulfur very fast. But we kind of are. Um, right now, the main source is through mining right here. So we are slowly using it. And then only if sulfur dioxide gas gets low because those other two methods can't keep it filled up. And then finally it will produce it from sulfur through the storehouse here. However, the storehouse will only be filled up to a point which will be blocked off here. So that's kind of how that whole system works. How are we doing with landfill? Still filling up. One other thing we can use these storehouses for is just to simplify this and have everything going into one warehouse because the problem is, is we're producing mud from several different sources now, so we don't necessarily need all of these running all the time. So we need to set a priority for that. And we kind of have a priority going with all of this splitter business, but we can make it look cleaner. This one will always run, because it's a byproduct. This one will always run, because it's a byproduct. It looks like I put that a little too close. Okay. But the one that'll only run sometimes is this guy right here it will only run just to top off this warehouse here, the storehouse. So let's say mud is less than 2,000. That will fire up and it will always output. That should be just a little cleaner way of handling this. I know it's still kind of a mess of belts and whatnot, but the logic is there. Okay, the research is done. I'm fine with doing some other research since the main thing I was worried about is our sapphire, but we seem to have quite a bit of it now. And we do want to get rid of that sulfuric acid, so more research is probably a good thing here. It looks like we're pretty good on most things for now, so I'll just continue some of this basic character upgrade stuff. Okay, we had some stuff to build. Mainly gun turrets. Cannons. Looks like we'll need to make some shotgun shells again. So we can make turret shells. Gates. And some concrete walls. Let's see. Let's start with the gun turrets. Gun turret mark two. Let's just make one assembling machine here. That's probably going to be plenty of output. So gun turret. Which is made from some plates. And a submachine gun. Which is made from a pistol. And there we go. So that's a modest amount of resources for this, but it's not like we're going to be needing tons of turrets, so this ought to be fine. So one into two into roughly two into one. And a lot of these machines use the same parts. 
let's see what we can build with this. Okay, the first one makes pistols. Second one, the SMGs. So the idea here is that the resources will come up there and then the output products will kind of come in there to be reinserted. And then these will put their products going up here. And then we need two machines, although these can be spaced like that. The Mark 1s. We'll pull in the SMGs from over there. And then they'll take more iron plates and copper plates from this belt right here. Meanwhile, the iron gear wheels, the steel gear wheels will be coming up through here. And then we'll probably have like a steel coming up through there. And this will be gun turret mark two. So something like that. So what kind of inserters are we going to need? Not much. That should be it for the semi-finished products on that side. Then one input there. And finally, we need some outputs. Let's do this. Limit it to one stack going out. And let's have one going in as well for the ones we need to upgrade that we pick up. Then there we go. That should be it. Right there. Okay, let's get iron and copper in. Looking good, let's add the gears. Okay, all is well. Finally, the steel parts. Looking good. Okay, let's do the cannon turrets next. One machine. So we need to make shotguns. And then pistols. That's a much cleaner ratio there. One to one to one, that'll be easy. So it's pistol, into shotgun, into cannon. Well, that's done. Should probably just keep researching more stuff here. So yellow there, put these over there to transfer the products. So that'll be wood and gear wheels. Then on this other side, it can be circuits and steel. And then the output. Simple enough. It's like the factory is falling behind on iron here. Looks like we're just producing everything we can. Nothing much to say there. Besides uh, expanding that whole system, but I kind of want to avoid that for now. We can, however, do ore processing to improve the efficiency of our iron, though. That would improve the output quite a bit. So yeah, let's do that after we've got these th things set up here. I'll stop the research for now to let it catch up. So we need iron and copper, and it's kind of been done already over here. The system is falling behind. It's going. Going as fast as it can. Well, we can hook it up now and let it catch up when it, it can catch up. And that's it for this episode. In the next one, we're going to build some walls, and then we're going to plan on ore processing to try to get some more resources in. Thanks for watching. See you later.